Welcome back, everyone, to the School of Greatness. Very excited about our guest. We have the inspiring Patrick Bet David, who is the founder of Valuetainment and uh, now best selling author of Choose Your Enemies Wisely Business Planning for the Audacious Few. Good to have you back oh, on, man. sir. Great to be on. Thanks Great to see you. On. I'm very excited. My audience is pumped. And we did a poll and we said, what do you want to hear the most from Patrick? And they asked, and I'm sure you've answered this before, but they said, if you had to start all over again, because you are an audacious guy, mm -hmm. let's say for some reason, everything goes bust one day. Mm -hmm. You saw Elon talking about this the other day. I hope everyone's, you know, what if it all goes bankrupt? I'm going to go for bigger moves. And if you had to start all over again with nothing in your pocket, what would be your first three moves? So if I'm 25, I would be less concerned about the industry because back then I may have been cocky, but I wasn't yet certain if my philosophies were right or wrong mm -hmm. because there's not validation in the marketplace yet. You wrote a book about this where you're kind of covering the facade to kind of impose you got, but you don't know. And if you're 25 today though, with all the chaos that's happening and insecurities and uncertainties, and you've never made money before really, what would you be thinking I'm go, about that? I'm, I'm fine. I'm making a list of 10 people mm. and 10 circles I want to be in. And I would make a draft pick of these 10 circles. I would say, okay, what's the, my number one circle I want to be a part of? Then I would go all the way down to number 10. I would research. I would look at guys that I like, guys' life that I admire, the way they carry themselves, the way they handle themselves. So this circle, I would say, well, those guys are really close to each other. I like the way they are. Boom. That's one circle. Boom. I really like this circle. That's pretty cool how these guys are always... They've known each other for all these years. They're so tight. It looks like they're enjoying it. Boom, boom, boom. Then I would make individuals because I have more odds. So if I got 10 circles I can get in, I want to work for number one first. So I reach out to number one. Then I go to second draft pick, third draft pick, boom, 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 boom. Because I'm more interested in working for a guy to, like, for example, the, the girl I promoted to be the president of our insurance company today, Moral, she's been with me for 13 years. She used to be my bank red WAMO. And when I would go to her, she handled me very well. If I was upset, if I was annoyed, if I wasn't happy with something, she knew how to bring me from a nine to a five. And I like that skill set. So I'm like, if this is how you are with me, I want you in my company. So I brought her in. And over the last 12 years, obviously the last year she got promoted to become the president of the insurance company. But the 12 years, she spent the most time in the rooms negotiating chaotic moments, conflict, <laughs> about to go out of business, finances, all these things that we got to do. She saw so much of that, that now when those things come up, she's not even thinking about it. It's like, yeah, here's what we're going to do. 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 We're going to do this. Because she's seen. She's seen how to manage that. So the edge is working under somebody that's a killer and you're able to get behind closed doors. Not just the front, because the front is an act, but I want to get in the room with five people we're negotiating. For example, like let's just say we're about to negotiate a big deal. Typically, if we're doing a big negotiation deal, we'll debrief, debrief before to prepare. And we'll say, okay, guys, <clears throat> what do you think he's going to say? What do you think she's going to say? What do you think is going to be their concerns? Let's write it down. Da -da 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 -da. What do you think is going to be their objection? What do you think they're going to want? What do you think they're not going to want? Where do they have leverage? Where do we have leverage? How are you going to answer this? How are you going to answer this? Boom. Anything I'm missing? What's my blind spot? Is anyone, what do you think about what he just wow. said? Do you agree with him? Do you agree with her? So if you're in these types of meetings for a thousand times, and then we go into the real meeting, then when you're in the real meeting and the guy says, uh, hey, uh, Louis, do you mind if we ask you to step out? And you're like, yeah, no problem, because we've role played it. What if they ask you to step out? Totally fine. You don't even like, you want me to step out? We would role play. Don't be offended. Just very nice. Absolutely. Get up and walk out because it shows we're not insecure. We're not worried. Oh, wow. They were comfortable about it. Hey, Patrick, you mind if you step up? Totally fine. I'm going to go in and use a restroom. Shows confidence. They're okay with not being in the room. 